So our uh, fourth uh, speaker today is uh, Gabriel Duchesne, who's at uh, McGill uh, University, and he's going to tell us about uh, nonlinear, the nonlinear Laplace Beltrami equation on the sphere. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. So I, uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, my master thesis research that I did at McGill under the supervision of Jean-Philippe Passat. Uh, and like GB said, I will be talking about computer-assisted proof for a nonlinear Laplace Beltrami equation on the sphere. So uh, we consider the partial differential equation one that we have right here on the two sphere with positive uh, parameter lambda. Uh, since we're on the sphere, we will try to write uh, that equation a little bit, make it a little bit prettier, make it a little bit simpler by start, first starting by doing a change of variable. Uh, First, if you do the classical, you know, spherical change of variable, we get uh, that the uh, Laplace Beltrami operator over u becomes uh, upper, uh, the operator that you see uh, at equation two. So far, we're failing at making it prettier, but we'll be looking at specifically at solution that are radial symmetric around the z axis and symmetrical in the equator, which means that basically we can re rewrite our first equation to get the following. Uh, second order uh, ODE with uh, Newman boundary condition. So, okay, my goal is to, my goal was to prove that there exists a solution. So how am I going to do that? Well, I will use a term that I'm sure everybody is familiar with, or at least everybody here probably has seen this in some form, is the radii, radii polynomial theorem for Banach spaces. So basically, what do I need to apply the theorem? I need to apply uh, to find some to define some Banner space uh, that spoiler will be uh, infinite sequence, the Banner space on the infinite sequence where this uh, the, se the element of the sequence will basically be the uh, coefficient of uh, some series expansion of the solution. I will talk more about that later. But then I need to define also some fresh differential, differential differentiable map that uh, will be a zero finding problem for which the solution will be the coefficient of the solution for the uh, Laplace Beltrami uh, equation that we have right here. Once I have that, I need to define two lead bundle linear operator, a dagger and a, that will basically be an approximation of the derivative and an approximation of the inverse of the derivative. And once I have that, I need to compute the bound y0, z0, z1, and z2. Uh, once I have all of that, I need to construct my ready polynomial. And now I hope very hard that uh, I did everything right, that my, uh, my bounds are small enough in a way that there will exist some positive r0 that is as I hope as close as zero as possible, so that it will be a root of my radii polynomial. And thus I could say that with that theorem that there exists a solution inside the ball centered at my X bar, that is my, would be my numerical approximation of radius R zero. Uh, okay, so like I said, I would define my banner space would basically be uh, the coefficients of my uh, of uh, some series expansion. So, which series expansion do I need to choose? Uh, and usually, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But now, it's very important for um, how I will develop my problem or continue my problem. So, if we look at the equation that we add, we see that there's a cotan in it, and that the, in the cotan at zero is not defined. So. If I want, for example, and work already have been done for on that problem in the previous paper, where uh, uh, they use Taylor series to be able to solve that equation, which work very nicely because, as we will see later, we can use Taylor series to kind of get rid uh, get rid of the discontinuities at zero. But the problem with that is that it was it was not uh, efficient enough. Not a lot of solution were able to be proven using. Uh, the Terra series. So another series that we could use is uh, a Chebyshev expansion instead, because as we know, Chebyshev expansion is way much stronger and does not suffer of the big flaw of Terra series that where their domain of convergence is a circle, since the, uh, the Terra series, uh, Chebyshev series have an ellipse. Instead, as the domain of convergence, we can, with Fokai minus one and one, we can always rescale our problem to be able to uh, guarantee that there are uh, to which have polynomial uh, expansion will converge. 
But the problem with that is that the cotam theta is, uh, is become way harder to uh, deal with because of the discontinuity at zero that we were able to get rid of, at least deal with using the uh, Taylor series. So what are we going to do here? Well, we will simply use a mix of the two. So we'll basically just for, so on the interval zero to delta, so, so for some value of delta that I will define, I will use a, a Taylor expansion. And on the remaining of the interval, so from delta to pi over two, I will be using a Chibichev expansion. So now I split my problem in two and I rescale them. So I rescale the interval zero delta to zero one and delta pi over two to minus one one. Uh, and then I, I get the following equation where k is equals to pi over four minus delta over two. So now our problem became the following. So now we have a system and we see that the first line would be, it's basically for the Taylor expansion as the second equation is for the Chebyshev expansion. But now we still need to do a little bit more work on it. So uh, to apply the Chebyshev technique, I need to have a first order problem, which is not, 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 not too hard to deal with because I just uh, I can just set, for example, that V equals U prime, and then I will just get a new first order system. Uh, but I also need to deal with the cotan. So the, the cotan in the first equation uh, with the Taylor series, it's easy because I can just write it as it, I know what it's, uh, uh, we already know analytically what is this uh, Taylor expansion, the Taylor uh, expansion of a Cotan, but the Taylor expansion of a, uh, the Chibichev expansion of a Cotan is a little bit harder to find. So maybe it's possible, but instead what I decided to do was to just include a new equation. So say that omega t is equal to my Cotan and then just write it as a, a solution of my, of some, uh, uh, some ODE and then include it in my system. So now I finally have the system that it will be working with that is given by uh, nine. So now I have another part, part in it. So the first equation is a second order that it will deal using Taylor expansion. Just uh, the end of three order will be dealt using Chibichev expansion. And I also still have my, uh, condi my boundary, condi my human boundary condition, but also I have also condition that link the two uh, equation, the two piece together. Okay, so now we define the expansion. So the first one would be Taylor, the three other would be Chibichev. And uh, also we know that uh, this is the result that, is, that we know from an uh, analytic result that the expansion of a cotan will be given by that. So now if I replace those, those results inside that equation that I factorize all the Chibichev polynomial and I factorize all the power of the total power n, I can, I'm able to construct a zero finding problem. Uh, and that zero finding problem is will give me that if uh, a solution of that will be, will give me the coefficient of all the, um, the, the, the solution of equation nine that we have right here. So I now have defined my zero finding problem for my radii polynomial approach. So, okay. So what is the next step? Uh, it's to define the Barnard space. So I would first start by def defining two Barnard spaces, uh, L mu one and L mu one that are basically respectively the Barnard space for the coefficient of in Taylor and the one for the coefficient in Chebyshev. Uh, then I will define with that the Barnard space X that is basically one time the L mu one and three times the L, uh, one times the L mu one and three times the L mu one. So once for the Taylor and three times for the three equations in Chibichev. Uh, one interesting fact is when I, the norm that I will use in that Banner space will be a weighted norm with you see alpha term, so alpha weight, alpha zero to alpha three. So why did I need that to do that? I could have taken alpha one, uh, zero, one, two, three to be equals to, for example, one. But the problem with that is that uh, when I was computing my bounds, my Z1 bounds, some part of the equation uh, had more weight than others. So using weights in front of them, it's a very efficient and simple way to try to balance the value of the bound Z1 to just, so that you can optimize basically your problem, your computation of the bounds. Uh, okay, so the next step will be to define my operators. 
Ada here is just basically is basically an approximation of the derivative. So we see that a, a dagger will be basically, I think it's easier to see it as block. And we see that each block would be basically a, a truncated derivative uh, and a tail, where the tail is basically there only to get rid of the linear term of our function when we compute the uh, our bound z1 and z2 and stuff like that. Uh, so once we have that, we can also define the operator A that will be given by, basically it would be an approximate inverse of uh, the A dagger, uh, except for the tail that we can compute, take just the direct uh, inverse. So when we have that, we almost, we have every, almost everything in the next step, which is the long step that I will not talk in details here because of time, but we basically uh, need to compute the y0, z0, z1, and z2 bounds. And to compute those, well, it's, a, it's where the, I think most of the computer, uh, computer assisted proof came in is that we will use a mix of analytical results. So a lot of pen and paper work to try to uh, bound the, the term in the radar polynomial. But once it's time to compute them, we will use a computer, but as you know, computers are far to be perfect and they're always a mistake in any kind of computation. So how do we deal with that? Well, but we, we will use interval arithmetic. So instead of working with doubles or single, we will, we will be working with, in my case, I'm using MATLAB and uh, INVAL. Where, so I'm working with an interval instead that uh, every, for every computation, I'm now working with an interval that I know that my solution exists between those. So now I can just take the supremum of that result and add, now add the rigorous computations of the bounds. Uh, once we have that, we construct a radar polynomial. And uh, now for the fun part, looking at the pretty picture of the solution, what do we get? So uh, there's multiple branch of solution for that problem. Uh, we will see later when we look at the uh, bifurcation, that uh, bifurcation di diagram. Uh, so for example, uh, one of the first branch happened when uh, uh, it crossed zero, the solution, the trivial solution at lambda equals six. And we see that we get uh, the, those first results. So along, so you have two different results for lambda here. Uh, you see in blue represent the part that I compute using uh, a Taylor expansion, as in orange, is the Chimchev expansion. Uh, another result, uh, as so for, this is the eighth branch. Uh, we see that it starts to oscillate a little bit. I needed to reduce my lambda, my delta, so the part of uh, Taylor that I took because it started to be a little harder to compute. So now we have those beautiful solution of the sphere that almost looked like Christmas ornament. Uh, so we now, if you take the 16th branch, we see that it's oscillate even more. So it's and we see that Chibichev is a very nice way to compute those kind of thing. And it's even, you know, see so my delta needed to be even smaller than. Uh, so if we quickly look at the bifurcation diagram, we see that this is all the solution I was able to compute and prove. So we see that I was able to compute up to 16 different branches. After that, it started to get a little bit hard numerically because since I was lambda increase, uh, my radius of convergence was de decreasing, and at some point, just, the method just failed. But if you compare that with a result that we're only using Taylor, it's way better because the uh, is just, in general, a way stronger uh, series expansion. Uh, so what's next? Well, with that project, what would be nice is to do a rigorous pseudo Arkland continuation because all the solutions that I compute are discrete solution. So it would be nice to, you know, compute the old branches itself, especially uh, above the, uh, the trivial solution line where we don't know really what is happening. So it would be nice to do a continuation on that side to see if something interesting is happening. Uh, another thing that will be nice is to, the, the, to find some kind of chip expansion of COTAM because if we were able to simplify it in a way, we would be able to remove completely one equation and then add a system that is a little bit smaller, a little bit probably easier to compute also. So that's it for me. Thank you.
Thank you, Gabriel. Um, any questions? I have a quick question. So when you talked about going, the, the problem gets really difficult as you go further along, right? Do you think mm -hmm. uh, using more chip chip domains would help or is it really the Taylor part that's making it impossible or making it so difficult as you go to uh, along the bifurcation diagram? That's a good question. Uh, well, we need to remember that lambda is part of, you know, our equation. So it's inside our, when we define our equation. So at the end of the day, I think that even if we take, um, so the tails of, of our, uh, uh, of our bounds, when you compute it, is always multiplied by lambda. It's uh, at uh, the, sure. so the Z1 tail will always be multiplied by lambda. So if you increase lambda, it, you see that it started to give me problem where lambda was around a thousand. So uh, there's a point where even if you take more Chebyshev expansion, you will always multiply your tail by lambda. Uh -huh. So maybe you can take more nodes, but you know, more taking more nodes leads to other problems, stuff like that. So uh, I think that there's some kind of restrictions. I ask for the further you go, you still multiply your tails by lambda and that will, if, as it increases, it makes the tail harder, and that's basically where this, the, 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 uh, the, the value of the Z1 came from most of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, but I, I think that in principle, the answer is yes. I mean, if you take, if we, we only did one Chebyshev, but if we take more Chebyshev, it should most definitely help. You uh, could go further. I, I think theoretically, even if lambda is a million, theoretically it should work, but of course now it's a function of the computer, right? How, how big? can handle uh, and for large lambda do you think you can transform to one over lambda or something and look at the i mean if you look at the profile of the solutions they kind of oscillate i mean they really oscillate a lot right uh, uh, so i mean at some point uh maybe but then if so then there would be yeah, a yeah, yeah. kind of rescale also the oscillation because it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're becoming really complicated mm -hmm. I think the, my impression is the big lambda is, is, is not only the problem that it increases the tail, but the solution itself becomes more complicated. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. what you cannot transform away, right? Yeah, right, that's, right. that's what I'm saying. So you would have somehow to rescale the oscillation or something like that. Yeah, it's exactly. But then for this, the domain decomposition would help right? for the fact that the solution is more complicated. Would help, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. May I ask another question? So um, uh, there are many interesting uh, ODE problems which are singular, uh, the, where the coefficients are singular near one endpoint or even near, near both endpoints. Would you think that this, this uh, the, the, the method you are proposing with this Taylor expansion at the singular endpoint is some kind of general purpose method for treating such problems or is that limited in some sense to this special cotan? Um, uh, singularity. Uh, yeah, here with the code. It's not, so, not, so, not a clear question, but it's just just to get an impression. But here, because the singularity came from the cotan, and we knew the Taylor, uh, the Taylor expansion of the cotan, so that's why, in a way, we were able to uh, we were able to you know get rid of it in some sense. But when, when, you have an, when you have another singularity and you know, let's say you know some kind of expansion of that singularity near the singular endpoint, could you then adapt this approach uh, to fit this uh, singularity? Yes, if you were able to express, for example, the singularity came from uh, something else in a cotan that you know the, the Taylor uh, series, then yes, I'm pretty sure we could adapt to do something similar with that problem. Uh, because in Chebyshev, what failed is because we didn't know what was the Chebyshev expansion. So that's why we needed to kind of split it in two and be deal, uh, transform it, use the Chebyshev away from the singularities uh, mm -hmm. because we needed to add one equation. But if we were even able to try to find the Chebyshev series, uh, maybe there will, it will need to be looked at, but maybe we could just have one big piece of Chebyshev and deal it in the same way. So. Okay, I'm gonna stop you, Gabriel. <laughs> okay. I have to stop you because <laughs> yes. Ron, and anyway, I think that uh, it is actually very good to use uh, Taylor at the center. You should not try to do a uh, chip center. But um, 
Uh, we're going to move on to the next speaker. 